Greetings, I'm Professor K, and in this short video presentation, we're going to see how we go about using Stegheid for hiding and extracting data. Stegheid is a steganography program that is able to hide data in various kinds of images and audio files. The color sample frequencies are not changed, thus making the embedding resistance against first-order statistical testing. Steganography is the process of hiding data in other content such as images, videos, and network traffic, and it continues to play a role in modern attacks in several different forms. Most uses of steganography in malware can be divided into two broad categories, the concealing of the actual malware in the contents of the image or the audio file, and the concealing of the command and control communications channel, such as a backdoor. The only application you will need for this lab is a virtual install of the CSI Linux Analyst virtual machine, and you'll need to ensure that the machine is actually configured with its network settings for NAT. Now before we can get started with the lab, we have to do a little prep work. And to begin this, we're going to bring up our favorite browser. In that case, for me, that would be Firefox. And up here in the address bar, I'm going to insert the address for my Dropbox location so that we can download some image files. Now you can copy and paste this from the lab file into your browser's address bar up inside of the CSI Linux Analyst. So once you have the Dropbox location up, just go over here to the right where it says Downloads and you're going to do a direct download. Now you're going to go ahead and save the file. Click OK. And you'll notice up here that it lets you know that the file downloaded successfully into your downloads location for Firefox. So let's go ahead and open up that directory. And we're just going to find that zip file for your stenography images. Now once you find the file for your stenography images, just go ahead and highlight it. Now hold down your left mouse button and just drag it on over to your downloads location. You can close out your file explorer. And now you can go into your file system, and you can go down here to your downloads, and you'll see that you have a sonography images.zip file. Now what we're going to do is we're going to extract everything inside of this zip archive. We're going to do this just by double-clicking it. And now we're just going to select extract. Now we're going to have everything extracted into the downloads directory. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create a new folder. We're going to call it Images. Now with our images extracted, we're going to right click anywhere inside of this white space and we're going to select Create a New Folder. We're going to call this folder Images with lowercase i and we're going to Create. Once you have that folder created, you're then going to just hold down your left mouse button on each one of these images and just drag them on over and place them inside of your Images folder. Once you've moved all your images into the images folder, just go ahead and open it up and you'll see that it has everything that we need to complete this lab. Go ahead and close out your file explorer. And we're going to visit the location of where we saved those images using the terminal. So I'm going to begin this by changing the location from my home directory to my downloads directory. So I'm going to type in cd space downloads and downloads has a capital D hit enter now you'll notice that my prompt changes to let me know that I'm inside of the download directory now I'm going to do an LS to show the contents of my downloads directory and you'll see that I have a folder inside of the downloads directory called images so let's do a CD images so that we can see what's inside of my images folder Hit enter. Now again I'll do another LS to look at the contents. And you'll see that all those images and a text file that we downloaded from the Dropbox are now present inside of that images folder inside of the downloads directory. Now for the remainder of the lab this is the directory that we will be working out of. Up here in my view I'm going to go ahead and zoom in just one time and make this a little bit bigger 
I'm going to extend my terminal just a little bit here. And what we're going to do now is we're going to embed one image into another image. Now to do this, I'm going to be using steg hide. Now the command that I'm going to use is steg hide space embed space ef space. Now I type in the name of the image that I want to embed. Give that a space. Type in dash cf space the name of the file that I'm going to embed the first image into. So I'm going to embed a file that is an image of Mona Lisa into another image called zebras.bmp. Let's go ahead and hit enter. Now the first thing it's going to ask you for is the passphrase because you have to give this a password. Now you're going to need that password to extract this image from this destination image that we just created. So make sure you remember it. And you're going to have to type it in one more time. And remember that this is Linux. So you're not going to see what you're typing when it comes to passwords. Once you've typed in the new passphrase, Stegheide is going to begin the process of embedding the Mona Lisa.jpg into the zebras.bmp file. And it only takes a few seconds, so you'll see that if you look at the output from your terminal, that it is completed. So I'm going to move my terminal over just a little bit so that I can see the icons on my desktop. Now, using my up arrow, I can go into the images folder again and do an ls. And you'll see that I do have a Mona Lisa file that is there. But I also have that same file embedded into the zebras.bmp image. So let's go back on over here to our file system. Open that up. Scroll on down to downloads. And open up your images folder that you created. Now go ahead, find your Mona Lisa image, right click on it, and we're going to send that over to trash. And if you look at the zebras.bmp image file, to which we save that image of Mona Lisa 2, you'll notice that there is no change. You can double click this, bring it up, and you can examine it inside of your image viewer, inside of CSI Linux Analyst, and you'll notice that the file looks completely normal. Now let's return to our terminal session, close out your file explorer, and if we do an ls, you'll notice that the file for Mona Lisa is no longer present, but we can bring it back quite easily. Now we're going to extract that Mona Lisa file from the zebra file that we just embedded that file into. And to do this, we're going to use stay hide again. And I'm going to type in stay hide space extract space dash sf space zebras dot bmp space dash xf space mlisa.jpg. Now what am I doing? I am saving the file that I'm extracting from the zebra.bmp file using a different name to make sure that I don't overwrite any existing file that may be present. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. Again, it wants the passphrase that we created when we embedded the file. So I'm going to type in the passphrase. And you'll quickly see that the file was extracted and it was saved as mlisa.jpg. So we can move this on over just a little bit. And we can go back into our file system. We can go into downloads. We can go into images. And you'll see that we now have the Mona Lisa back. And it is now named mlisa.jpg. Close that out. And we can go back on over to our terminal and we can see the same thing just by typing in ls. Hit enter. And you'll see that I have a file called mlisa.jpg. Now of interest to all of us should be the commands that we used with stay height. So the ef stands for embed a file. Cf is the cover file or the destination file that we're going to embed the file into. And SF is stego file. 
that is the name of the file that we're going to extract. And XF extracts the file using a particular file name that we assign to it. So there are some caveats when you're doing this type of snagrenography. The first one is the file that you embed into the destination or the cover file must be much smaller in size with and in height than the destination folder or the cover file. If the payload is too big, state hide will just refuse to complete the operation. Now, if you compress or you archive that file, that has nothing to do with the file that's embedded. So that's also not going to work. So if you have a file inside of a file, you won't be able to archive it or to compress it. And that's going to conclude this short video presentation on how we go about using Steghide for hiding and extracting data inside of image files. So if you have any questions or you have any concerns about anything that was covered in this short video presentation, please do not hesitate to reach out and contact your instructor. And I'll see you in my next video.